okay. In uh, August. Oh, okay. Interesting. So I'll be contacting you once again. <laughs> ah, well, I will be. It's always a pleasure. Marudu, you are from Tir. One of the one of the sir. One of the. Wange, wange. You are from Tirunel Valley, right, sir? Yes, sir. I am from Tirunel Valley. Uh, we are not very far away. <laughs> That's true. That's true. We are very far away. <laughs> Just one fifty yeah. kilometers away. <laughs> you are at least you are at least nearer to the Kerala capital than the Tamil Nadu capital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Tirunel Valley has a historical link that's, with that's Anya Kumari. Tirunel Valley has such a historical link. Both ways, no. See, interestingly, na yenge tangra from the way, place I am staying, I mm. look east. எனக்கு பார்க்க முடியறது அகஸ்தியார் கூட அகஸ்தியார் ரேஞ்சஸ் மலை ஓகே ஓகே அதுக்கு இஃப் ஐ கோ ஸ்ட்ரைட் அப்பர் தி ஈஸ்ட்ல போனா அவங்க கேட் ஆயிடுச்சு we also see agastya malai every day <laughs> yeah so for the cross distance but straight ah apdi irukku aama aama yeah yeah so Uh, hello. Maru, there are no five minutes. We'll start it immediately. Okay, okay. Uh, we see join one on time. Sir, sir, come on. Tell me, bring it. Ah, come on, sir. Come on, sir. Very happy. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. தண்ணிக்குடி <laughs> 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 மின்க <laughs> 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 பேசுறவங்கிட்டுங்க <laughs> 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 அனுப்புவார் 
ஏதோ ஒண்ணு மீட்டிங் போயிடாதா வெளிநாய்ஸ் வராம இருக்கும் right uh, good evening to all good evening sir uh, manon maniam sundarnar university department of sociology and center for study of social exclusion and inclusive policy welcomes you all to this meeting nammalvara patti unga ellarkume theriyum inga participate pandravanga ellarume oru alavukku nammalvara patti therinjavanga da Inniki, we are having this meeting to understand more about uh, Namalwar's uh, contribution to ecological justice and uh, 
this uh, agricultural practices and this link with uh, rural development avarukku vande pala konangal irundhathu he he was a multi faceted person and he has impacted uh, south asia in a big way tamil nadu mattum avar namma surukki paaka mudiyadhu avar vande south asia la நிறைய பேர் அவர்கிட்ட வந்து தொடர்புல இருந்தாங்க பல இடங்கள்ல பர்டிகுலர்லி திருநெல்வேலியை பொறுத்த வரைக்கும் களக்காட்டுல அவர் வந்து அவர் பணி ஆரம்பிக்கும் போது களக்காட்டுல வச்சுதான் ஆரம்பிச்சாரு ஸோ வி ஆர் வெரி க்ளோஸ் டு இம் இன் தட் சென்ஸ் அண்ட் இன்னைக்கு நம்மாழ்வார் வந்த பிறகுதான் வி ஃபைண்ட் தட் ஆர்கானிக் ஃபார்மிங் ஹேஸ் டேக்கன் ரூட்ஸ் இன் தமிழ்நாடு இன் அ பிகர் வே ஆர்கானிக் ஃபார்மிங் வாஸ் ஆல்ரெடி எக்ஸிஸ்டிங் இன் தமிழ்நாடு பட் to a great extent because of the onslaught of modern technologies and modern modernity and also because of uh, corporates uh, pressure we found that uh, with green revolution ms swaminathan coming in and promoting green revolution we had a very strong wave to adopt modern uh, farming methods and particularly corporate farming methods and namarwar was a person who worked in the agricultural department so he understood the various aspects of uh, modern farming industrial farming and he came out as a strong proponent who opposed this way of farming because he wanted to save not only the soil and water but also he had a vision of the society and uh, so today we are here also to explore the links between jc kumarappa and namarwa because uh, in certain ways jc kumarappa is a forerunner to namarwa so given this kind of a context today i am very happy to see that we have about 50 participants in this meeting and uh, i i at this morning i was meeting professor pichumani who is our vice chancellor and when i was talking to him i was telling him that uh, we are planning to continue this dialogue on namarwar in a larger way so in the month of august we are right now talking to various people not only in india but also abroad in malaysia in thailand in the Indo- indonesia in japan and we are thinking of looking at the whole aspect of agro ecology from a asian perspective and from a global perspective so to move along further we thought first we should organize a meeting in tamil nadu with regard to namarwar because certain clarifications of ideas on namarwar is very important to all of us and uh, today with so many challenges coming with uh, covid where people are now facing almost famine kind of situations uh, i am very sorry to say this ena uh, month end pathina around 20th pathina i see a lot of uh, middle class people coming around asking for some kind of food to be provided to them tamil nadu arasu vandu ration la nariyave kudukranga illa nu solala பட் லாக்டவுனில் லைவ்லிஹுட் இல்லாத போது அவங்ககிட்ட அந்த மணி இல்லாததுனால பர்ச்சேசிங் பவர் இல்லாததுனால தே வர் நாட் ஏபிள் டு கோ பியாண்ட் அண்ட் சீக் ஃபுட் செக்யூரிட்டி அந்த ஃபுட் செக்யூரிட்டிக்காக பீப்புள் வர் கம்மிங் அரவுண்ட் ட்ரைங் டு கெட் ஹெல்ப் ஃப்ரம் வேரியஸ் பீப்புள்ஸ் என்ஜிஓஸ் அண்ட் வேரியஸ் அதர் சிவில் சொசைட்டி பேஸ்ட் ஆர்கனைசேஷன்ஸ் ஸோ இந்த மாதிரிலாம் பார்க்கும்போது நம்ம ஆழ்வார் இன் வாட் வே இட் பிகம்ஸ் ஈவன் மோர் ரெலவெண்ட் இன்னைக்கு இருக்க இந்த லாக்டவுனில் abindrathu nama paaka oru avashyam varudhu so in, today because of that we decided that we are going to explore the whole idea of sustainable development from namarwar's perspective and also the various thinkers who stand behind him like jc kumarappa avara mari aalkalla avaru pinadi nikkranga adanal avangala pathiyum we want to explore today in the in the week from 5th to 10th so i am very happy that uh, the vice chancellor of uh, manon maniam sundarnar university very happily he gave me permission to conduct this uh, web- webinar for this one week 
and uh, the head of the department of sociology dr marudukutti who is also the acting registrar na avarta pesna romba sandosha pattar indha mari or topic ah vandha namma romba naala namma pannanum nu nenichittu irundha adhu ipo pandrom abinte avarum romba sandosha pattar so i am very happy that we have about 50 participants today and uh, very serious people have come in and uh, today i am i welcome you all and i request uh, dr marudukutti to welcome everybody is it uh, for this meeting thank you dr marudukutti okay uh, respected vice chancellor distinguished uh, mr sridhar radhakrishnan and uh, other learned participants and uh, led faculty members and dear students and especially we know that it is a jointly organized by the both the department of sociology and uh, the center for inclusion and inclusive policy but more know this uh, professor samuel asiraj only taken much responsibility and organizing this program so it's good evening it gives me immense pleasure to give this kind of wel welcome address first of all i take this opportunity to welcome our uh, respected vice chancellor and dr samuel asiraj for this uh, for their sincere effort in organizing this program i am also very much impressed by choosing the right team namalwar and the seed of sustainable development and ecological uh, development ecological justice by choosing various uh, resource persons and after resource person that to linking with uh, dr jc kumarappa and namalwar and uh, other uh, important uh, developmental approach of uh, biodiversity aspects and their ideology and various aspects and various resource person by way of uh, giving a very uh, impressive program uh, for this whole big evening and i'm sure uh, this program will immensely benefit you all and before that no i am very proud and working under the leadership of our vice chancellor who has an instrumental behind giving permission and are not only this providing all kind of support in organizing this kind of program because even uh, i am born brought up in an agrarian community and though i am born brought in an agrarian community many rural people even illiterate people they may not be knowing much knowing about namalwa i think this is the right time and by exploring namalwar and uh, its uh, seed for sustainable development and ecological justice uh, by giving the right person for this inaugural address mr sridhar radhakrishnan who has uh, basically an engineer by profession and taught in various institutions for more than 8 years and he has resigned from government service in 1997 since then he has been actively involved in activities related to environment and health justice he is the program director and focusing on campaign policy and advocacy his experience is in working the issues related to industrialization industrial pollution waste pesticides and impacts and presently is the deputy national coordinator of the save our rice campaign he is also convener of the movement in india called coalition for genetically modified free india which is striving towards keeping india free from genetically modified crops and food as well as advocating towards sustainable agriculture i welcome you sir on behalf of uh, our uh, university and on our behalf of the uh, sociology department and uh, uh, center for inclusion and exclusive policy when we talk about uh, uh, namalwar i said no from the very beginning or uh, at the very beginning professor samuel asiraj also highlighted about his ideas about uh, sustainable whole ecological system by sustaining health or retaining the healthy practices or reviving the healthy lifestyle because we are all living in the era of enhancing the quality of life my appeal is we must have the valuable input in making this 
approach as an integrated approach because namalwar approach is an integrated approach not only for the food security because this approach is from the basic ipo epdi or naatu maadu vechirundho adilirundho epdi organic farming pathi sonnaanga panjagaavi engal edukrom epdi poochi marundu kuduthu adu epdi paravaigala valarthu andha poochi kelund epdi paadhukakkirathu adhe mari innor important an approach epdina நம்ம வந்து பெஸ்டிசைட்ஸ் கொடுத்தோ அல்லது பெர்டிலைசர் கொடுத்தோ விவசாயத்தை வளர்த்தாம செடி கொடிகளை நம்ம எது வேண்டாத செடி கொடிகள் எல்லாம் செடிகளுக்கே உரமா வச்சு இஸ் ஐடியா சார் மண்ணுக்கு வந்து ஒரு ஒரு ரெவல்யூஷனரி திங்கிங் அதே மாதிரி கன்செப்சுவல் ஃப்ரேம் ஒர்க் அண்ட் பிராக்டிசஸ் அண்ட் அட் த சேம் டைம் ப்ரொடக்டிங் த சீட் இது எல்லாமே கொடுத்துருக்காரு ஸோ இந்த நேரத்தில் நம்ம நினைக்க வேண்டியது என்ன அப்படின்னா அவரோட அப்ரோச் அவரை பத்தி தெரியாத விஷயங்களை நம்ம ஒரு எஜுகேட்டட் கம்யூனிட்டி நம்ம மட்டும் தெரிஞ்சுக்கிறது மட்டும் இல்லாம நமக்கு தெரிஞ்ச விஷயங்களை நம்ம சுத்தி இருக்கக்கூடிய விவசாயிகளுக்கு மட்டும் இல்ல படிப்புறவங்களுக்கு இந்த ஆர்கானிக் ஃபார்மிங் அப்புறம் ஹெல்த் லைஃப் ஸ்டைல் வர்றதுக்கு உண்டான என்னென்ன பிராக்டிசஸ் நம்ம அவர்கிட்ட இருந்து தெரிஞ்சுக்கிறோமோ நமக்கு தெரியாத விஷயங்களை தெரிஞ்சு மற்றவங்களுக்கு அந்த நாலேஜ கொண்டு போய் சேர்த்ததுல மிகப்பெரிய பங்கு நம்ம வைக்கணும் அப்படின்னு சொல்லி நான் இந்த வெல்கம் அட்ரஸ் நான் உங்களை விட்ட வேண்டிக்கிறேன் அதே நேரத்தில் அவரோட ஸ்பீச் வந்து இப்போ நம்ம துணைவேந்தரோட ஸ்பீச் அந்த மின்னாகரல் அட்ரஸில் அவர் கொடுக்கக்கூடிய ஸ்பீச்சும் அதே மாதிரி ஒவ்வொரு எக்ஸ்பர்ட்டும் கொடுக்கக்கூடிய ஸ்பீச் எல்லாமே வந்து நமக்கு ரொம்ப பயனுள்ள வகையில் நீங்கள் எடுத்துட்டு அது மக்களுக்கு சென்றடையில நீங்கள் எல்லா முயற்சி எடுக்கணும்னு சொல்லி வேண்டியானது உரையை முடித்துக் கொள்கின்றேன் நன்றி வணக்கம் thank you marudukutti and now i request our vice chancellor professor pichmani to give the inaugural address sir am i audible yes sir yes, yes sir. sir audible sir uh, distinguished dignitaries on behalf of ms university i have great pleasure in present i mean in presiding over this week long program webinar on malwar and the seed of uh, sustainable development and ecological justice organized by department of sociology and center for study of social exclusion and inclusive policy i take this opportunity to thank dr samuel asiraj and his colleagues our registrar dr marudha kutti and all the faculty members of department of sociology i also take this opportunity to welcome all the distinguished speakers for all eminent exponents of the concept which namalwar propagated throughout his life uh, dr mr sridhar radhakrishnan and other speakers who are uh, going to deliver lectures for the next few days and this is a wonderful opportunity uh on the concept of namalwar the idea for which uh, he what the heart and the seed of uh, sustainable development and ecological justice and dear colleagues and i also take this opportunity to thank all the delegates all the participants who have taken pain to attend this uh, meeting uh the concept of today and the, uh, the week long uh, webinar this is on preserving nature preserving a sustainable development and preserving the ecology and thereby rendering justice uh, to everybody every everything everybody who is living in this earth so one health for all not only for us though we are uh, human beings though we have inhabited and we have Uh, taken advantage of uh, the earth the earth is for ever for everybody not only for us for all the animals for all the insects for all the plants and also for the all the microorganisms who are occupying the planet so uh, the basic idea is to preserve nature and thereby uh, preserve i mean thereby rendering justice for sustainable development and justice for everybody everybody which is living in this planet so nature is very unique very smart enough 
to maintain an equilibrium everything is nature is finely balanced for example think of uh, respiration and photosynthesis two processes which are very closely interrelated where the energetics of both are exactly same the energy involved in both respiration and the kind of active species which are created they are all exactly the and there's a very fine equilibrium uh, respiration is a process whereby we liberate carbon dioxide and we take oxygen whereas photosynthesis is just the reverse so nature maintains that kind of uh, equilibrium so this is the uniqueness and greatness of uh, nature and when we think of uh, this uh, i would just uh, like to recall uh, what the geologists they call the various kinds of very various kinds of era in which we pass through and ice age uh, was with us for a very long time and exactly 12000 years before now uh, there was an epoch called the holocene epoch but the kind of holo means uh, one or unity so everything is kind of uh, a preserving uh, nature and kind of uh, equilibrium uh, that Era of twelve thousand years. This is known for remarkable stability of this planet. And from nineteen fifty onwards, geologists call Anthropocene epoch. So we are dominated by uh, what is called the dominant effect of impact of the overall human activity. Anthropocene, that is the industrial revolution that created a lot of pollution, and the ill effects of this. we tend to deviate from uh, what nature gave us accelerated carbon dioxide emission pumping fertilizers across the land oceans are dumped with the plastics and carbon dioxide leading to acidification consequently uh, because of uh, greenhouse i mean carbon dioxide emission sea level rise and global mass extinction of species in fact when there is a transition from ice age to holocene epoch Uh, many species for example dinosaurs they all uh, became extinct in that era and when we pass from holocene to this era again there is a lot of uh, uh, many of uh, species which tend to occupy this planet they all uh, uh, became extinct and more importantly in addition to carbon dioxide there is unsustainable increase of flow of uh, reactive nitrogen particularly by way of our extensive use of uh, fertilizers and even phosphorus species there is a fine equilibrium the equilibrium between carbon nitrogen and phosphorus they were all disturbed to a very very significant level and land uh, transformation that is also a major ill effect of uh, this uh, anthropocene epoch and due to deforestation and in fact many people tend to call this deforestation this is the main reason for the spread of all uh, this uh, virus which is uh, impacting us so uh, so we are uh, when you disturb nature nature also uh, like to retaliate in its own unique way and there are several examples which we have uh, witnessed in this uh, uh, disturbance of natural and uh, other uh, react i mean natural systems one simple example um, because everything we would like to uh, have its own uh, kind of mechanism to sustain its uh, uh, activity uh, for example when we want to increase the agriculture production because humans have a tendency to consume more uh, in by for by way of anything whether it is food or uh, uh, vehicles everything everything uh, dresses Uh, this over consumption of what we really need that is that is the major impact of uh, this ill effect for example when you think of uh, pesticide when pest the one of the first pesticide uh, which was introduced in developed countries this is we are all familiar this is the ddt dichloro diphenyl trichloroethane and one of the very staunch environmentalists who opposed this uh, rex garson Uh, in fact she died she was the single handedly she fought against all the corporates in the in us and uh, in fact she died out of uh, cancer so uh, she created an awareness of uh, this pesticides how this affects the how this kills the soil 
and after some 10 or 15 years the soil becomes uh, immune to uh, ddt so ddt is ineffective to control the pest and then second generation of pesticides uh, which are effectively organo phosphorus pesticides and they are still more dangerous in fact they have the potential to affect the central nervous system excessive use of these uh, pesticides affects the central nervous system and again after 10 or 15 years this also becomes immune the land i mean this pesticide will not, are not that effective then comes the third generation of pesticides known as carbamate pesticides and actually they have the potential uh, when the pesticide is uh, used more uh, the carbamates have a tendency uh, to go into our uh, living uh, digestive system by our food so and then come the fourth generation pesticides with our synthetic uh, uh, pyrethroids which are actually the one uh, commonly used in uh, mosquito repellents they again they are all uh, so the immunity or uh, the resistance of these pests towards these pesticides is also going on increasing so human beings are using more and more stronger pesticides now people are using the fifth generation pesticides which are called neonicotinoids and they have the potential they are very strongly neuroact so they affect the uh, nervous system in a very significant manner in fact uh, the examples of honey bees how they lose track of their uh, uh, they they have the uh, they lose their smell uh, they lost uh, track of their uh, home so all these things are uh, because of the excessive use of uh, uh, this pesticide and the neonicotinoids they are also known as acetylcholine exrase uh, inactive agonist uh, so these are all this is just one example of excessive use of this pesticides not only kills the soil but also uh, creates a lot of uh, toxic effects on uh, human beings so this is uh, so nature retaliates in several ways in fact we are now living in an era of uh, climate uh, transition so i mean every alternative months we are witnessing either a flood or a storm or uh, hurricanes a lot of this uh, natural way of uh, uh, repercussion this is affecting us uh, even in india uh, several examples of uh, say cyclone of kani bay of bengal and uh, it affects i mean even a few months be- i mean one or two months before the state of west bengal and odisha they are devastated by uh, the hurricanes and uh, all examples are too well known uh, so i need not uh, rec- uh, recollect all these things so these are all how nature retaliates when you affects the fine very uh, delicately balanced equilibrium with which nature uh, endows us uh, just some 150 years before and even tamil la vandu panja bhoodangal sollu neer nilam neruppu kaatraga everything is affected neer nilam everything uh, in fact uh, india is most uh, poly- uh, one of the most polluted uh, country in the world out of the most polluted 20 cities in the world 13 are from india so our air is so strongly polluted uh, delhi delhi i mean in fact one of the reason for the spread of covid virus this is again mainly due to uh, uh, air pollution uh, it affects the lungs and other uh, uh, i mean our body organs now i i just would like to uh, finish my inaugural letters giving a simple example uh, we have actually endangered our earth very very significantly every now uh, nama enna pandrona when there are forests and human beings where we live kaadugalaiyum manidargalin vaalvidangalaiyum enikkum pagudhi they are called biodiversity hotspots when now when we are encroaching this biodiversity hotspot actually these viruses they are the predom- i mean they are predominantly inhabiting uh, only animals and uh, on the biodiversity hotspot la ulla animals kuda all these viruses they enjoy, they live happily but when you are encroaching their place uh, when the animals are driven into the forest 
these viruses has no other space to go in fact uh, they come back to us nammala baadikkudhu so this is from vana vilangugal irundhu nammala idu baadikkudhu so this is the main reason so most of these pathogens they travel from animals to us because nammala adanoda edathukku porom and so ipo namu undu we are uh, making a huge cry uh, how these viruses are affecting us in fact this is just only a beginning corona virus is any more viruses are going to come in every few years every alternative years we have a new type of viruses and many of them may have the potential to turn into uh, just like uh, corona virus they have the potential to become uh, hot spots i mean or uh, sarvadesa tottu noyaga marakudiya vaippugal ullathu so nammude excessive greed namakku ella venum உலகம் முழுவதையும் தன்மையப்படுத்த நினைக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு டெண்டன்சி ஸோ இதனால பயோடைவர்சிட்டி திஸ் இஸ் அஃபெக்டட் வெரி வெரி சிக்னிபிகண்ட் எக்ஸ்டன்ஸ் ஸோ இதனால நிறைய நிறைய உயிரினங்கள் இழந்து நம்ம இழந்து விட்டோம் ஸோ இது திஸ் ஆர் ஆல் ஜஸ்ட் சம் சிம்பிள் எக்ஸாம்பிள்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஹவு ஹியூமன் டெண்டன்சி டு ஆக்குபை மோர் அண்ட் மோர் திஸ் கிரியேட்டட் ஹவ் ஒர்க் இன் அவர் என்பிரன் ஸோ இப்படிப்பட்ட ஒரு சூழ்நிலையில நம்மாழ்வார் மாதிரி இயற்கையை தக்க வைத்துக் கொள்ள விரும்புகிற ஒரு மனிதனோட போராட்டம் ஒரு மனிதனோட முயற்சிகள் சார்ந்த விஷயங்கள் தெரிந்து கொள்ள வேண்டிய கட்டாயத்தில் நம்ம இருக்கிறோம் இன்ஃபேக்ட் தெர் இஸ் மச் மோர் லார்ஜர் அவேர்னஸ் அபவுட் அவர் நம்மளுடைய தேவை இட் இஸ் அ நாட் இது தேவை மட்டும் இல்லை it is a must it is a historical necessity apdi in the in the kala kattathil irundhu only when we travel back to what nature gives us and the mari or soolaila nam thirumbara soolukku nam vandha da nammaludeya sandadhiyoroda vaalkai adutha thalaiyila safer a irukum adukku vande indha maadhiri conferences organized by our colleague dr samuel asiraj and all distinguished eminent speakers who are going to deliver very valuable input about uh, the uh, concept of uh, namalwar and uh, the seed for uh, sustainable development and ecological justice in fact um, uh, i mean there is an un uh, 2030 agenda for uh, sustainable development which focuses on transforming our world adu vandu not really focusing on just the environment and the sustainable development goal la first goal e vand end poverty in all its forms everywhere so there are about uh, 17 goals which uh, un has uh, fixed as a target for the year 2030 alla vand yerkai saarnda vishayangal pinnadi dhaan varudhu so uh, there is what is called the three components in equilibrium social equity economic stability and environmental stability in the moon may they are all closely linked there is a fine equilibrium between all these three only when there is a social equilibrium social stability and the removal of poverty everywhere not only for human but for all of us and the mari or sulal create agra tanmai nilamai vanda da ulagam adanudeya edathile adanudeya nilamaila takka veithukolla mudiyum so adukke conferences like this will be very very helpful to create an awareness among our uh, younger colleagues so uh, on behalf of ms university i have great pleasure uh, in welcoming all the delegates and i thank dr samuel asiraj for giving me this opportunity and i wish this program a great success thank you all sir thank you very much sir uh, i am very happy that uh, our vice chancellor was able to participate with us today and uh, discuss issues which are of great relevance with regard to global climate change with regard to the kind of risk that this earth is now undergoing and particularly the people in the coastal areas and uh, people of the world all over are facing severe storms அதுக்கப்புறம் இந்த வைரஸ் இதெல்லாம் வந்து சார் வந்து இப்போ ஹைலைட் பண்ணியிருக்காங்க ஸோ இந்த பேசிஸில் வந்து வி ஹேவ் டு நவ் லுக் அட் ஹவு நம்மாழ்வார் ஹேஸ் டாக்ட் அபவுட் அன் ஆல்டர்னேட் வேர்ல்ட் வியூ 
and uh, alternate world altogether. If uh, on the presentation, the first person to present today is going to be uh, Mr. Sridhar Radha, uh, Radha Krishna. And uh, I'm very happy to welcome Mr. Sridhar Radha Krishna. Uh, Dr. Marubuti, only Sridhar Radha Krishna, Sara, only introduced Pandanga, Lar Munalio, that he's a engineer who has who was also in teaching and he has quit his job to become today a person who is involved in uh, campaigns policy advocation and uh, for policy and advocacy on uh, various issues and in particularly rice based issues so uh, today i invite Mr. Sridhar Radha Krishnan, without much money uh, attached. So, sir, we are very happy to have you today. I request you to take the stage. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, um, am I audible? First of all, let me check my audio. Am I yes. audible? Yes, sir. You are clearly yeah. audible. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. See, I am, first of all, extremely happy and very delighted, very blessed, and uh, feeling quite proud that I was invited for this uh, conference, uh, this webinar. Uh, as I understand, this is organized by the sociology department at the Center for Study of Social Exclusion and Inclusive Policy uh, of the MS University. I'm especially thankful to Father Maipa Jesaraj because uh, he was the one who you know invited me, uh, and uh, I am. Uh, showing up, I mean, I'm quite grateful to Dr. Marutu Kuti for the wonderful introduction, and for to uh, to the Vice Chancellor, to the Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. J. Pichumani, for the absolutely very very clear and enlightened introduction that he gave to the day's topic. Uh, I'm not sure how much time I'll get, but let me you know start with. Uh, what we all have come here for. Uh, the conference itself, the webinar itself, which is going on for, from 5th to 10th, I understand, is on seed of sustainable development and ecological justice and the relation and, and Namalwar as the icon of it in Tamil Nadu especially and in other parts of the country and to various people in the world who have known him, understood him and have worked with him. Uh, what I will do in my talk is I will initially uh, spend some time on re, you know, visiting his life in some sense in relation to the topic, obviously, because I understand there are many people, very big stalwarts, including people like Claude Alvarez and others, and, uh, and including Selvam, and all of them are uh, going to talk about, or Ramasubramanian, they're all going to talk about Namalwar's various facets uh, from various points of view. So let me, uh, you know, give a very brief initial uh, thoughts about him and then let us go into the analysis of what he actually meant to the environment to the ecology and to all of us in some sense obviously we all know he was born in 1938 this was pre-independence and uh, his uh, uh, he suddenly and very uh, you know shocking all of us who knew him for years worked with him very closely uh, he was a guru to me and uh, he was a guru to hundreds and thousands of people in Tamil Nadu and other places. Uh, he passed away suddenly on 30th December 2013. I still remember that night when the announcement came. Somebody called us up and said, he's no more. We were shocked. And then immediately we, a few of us from Trivandrum, took a vehicle and went all the way to Tanjavur because we wanted to see him for the last. It was a, a very emotional moment for all of us at that time because uh, somebody who led all of us and who could easily, very easily pick up an idea from something that we were doing and make it a big campaign in Tamil Nadu. So wherever we, he came, he ensured that it was the smallest and the most simple people who could understand what he was saying. That is a big difference that he brought in, not just as a scientist, but also as a very, very, you know, strong thinking human being. And I will dwell into some of it. He was obviously a green crusader. We all know that because he was strongly 
working on the environment. No, the facet of that part, not many people know. And uh, I also uh, did not obviously know too much about his environmental side or his activities as far as ecology is concerned, except in the last phase of his life, uh, last five years of his life when he uh, fought the uh, last few years in his life when he fought the methane gas issue in the Delta areas. That was the big fight. And in fact, that was also the fight that in some sense took away his life because he had put his life into the fight, into the struggle of the farmers in the Delta area. Uh, and uh, if he had not put his life there, if he had not, you know, uh, got in and brought all the groups together and explained it and, you know, brought the farmers out into fighting that uh, methane gas extraction issue of an American multinational. Uh, and the India government was also hand in glove with that. Uh, the Tamil Nadu government was like not very sure whether should, they should allow or not. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have the government now uh, with the present government in Tamil Nadu actually stand up and say that we don't want the project. It's a big victory. It's a huge victory, which I would owe. I mean, I think the whole state of Tamil Nadu owes to Namalwaraya. He was an agriculture scientist and environmental activist. He was an organic farming guru. And most importantly to him, organic farming was not about, you know, bringing inputs of organic into the farm, like what we are seeing nowadays, which is also a very commercial level of farming. I will give you a very interesting anecdote at some point. Uh, it was more about ecological and natural farming. And his understanding of, or what the way he talked about ecological and natural farming is very different from uh, what people also, you know, nowadays proponents of ecological or natural farming or organic farming keep telling. His initial years in Kovilpati, his uh, work uh, with Islands of Peace, which is an organization with which he worked for about 10 years, uh, all of it, you know, exposed him in his early years itself to the, to the uh, various, uh, you know, issues uh, which are related to agriculture especially the use of chemicals and fertilizers, the use of the wrong crops in the wrong regions, uh, you know, rain-fed uh, areas, having crops which need intensive irrigation, uh, or even to uh, the very idea of, uh, you know, having crops which have to be produced somewhere and sold hundreds and thousands of kilometers away. He was a strong proponent of participatory development. He was a strong proponent of localization in some sense. In the late 1970s, interestingly, we'll also see that uh, he was very influenced by two uh, important, uh, you know, thinkers in this world. One was obviously our own Vinod Bhabhave, and the other was Paulo Freire. Uh, Paulo Freire was a Brazilian, uh, you know, thinker and writer, and and uh, he was very impressed by uh, their philosophies. So that is uh, the uh, the other, uh, you know, thing uh, facet of his life, which. I think uh, becomes very important for us to look at. Uh, now, let me, uh, you know, go to uh, a little bit of his life uh, after that, where, you know, he worked for some, I mean, he was associated with Auroville. And that is where one major change happened in his life, which is his meeting with Dr. Bernard de Clark and their work. Uh, he was actually the state coordinator of one of the works that started in 1995, which is interestingly called agricultural renewal in India for sustainable environment, it's called ARISE. I do not know whether the project is still there, but he was the state coordinator and Bernard de Klerk was the uh, national coordinator. In 2000, you will see him, you know, working very intensively when the tsunami hit. He had already the thinking of how an ecological restoration of this salt hit or the or the, uh, the or the sea water hit farms in 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 the Nagapatnam district, many villages uh, could be revived ecologically. While at that point, government was talk talking about chemically induced revival of uh, these villages uh, and the farms. Namalwar when Aya went in and started what they called, uh, you know, what he called ecological farming in those regions. A very agroecological approach. Interestingly for him, organic farming or natural farming or ecological farming in Tamil, he called it Yerkai Yivasai. Interestingly, that is where the whole idea of Yerkai comes in. Even in Kerala, uh, we have, uh, you know, we when we are talking about organic farming, we call it Jaiva Krishi. But here, there, he was actually not even calling it organic. He was calling it natural. And that is a big difference and something that I will dwell on sometime in my talk. 
uh, he actually proposed the idea of what we call multiversity. It's in, I mean, why I'm talking about this is the background is when we are getting into the ecological sphere in which he worked or, or contributed, these become very important. What is the idea of multiversity? See, to him, education, and I think he very much got it uh, from uh, Paulo Freire in, in, to, to a large extent because uh, Paulo Freire was, a, was an exponent of pedagogy and, uh, and, and education. And so there was some sense of uh, this being carried. We, we, we see Namal Varaya being carrying these thoughts uh, into the larger people and to, the, uh, and to his work. So, you know, when you talk about multiversity, his idea was very interesting. Once we had a talk, and uh, I mean, personally, me and hello, personally, me and my uh, colleague Usha, uh, who led the uh, Save Our Race campaign, she was a national coordinator and I was the deputy coordinator. When we went around these, these various states working, and in Tamil Nadu, we worked very closely with Namal Varaya. He, he came right from 2004 onwards, he was there traveling along with us until he passed away in 2013. And later, his, uh, you know, his, his uh, followers, especially Nel J. Raman and uh, a few others, uh, came along and they all uh, worked in the same campaign along with us. Uh, so we find that it was not just Namalwar, but the but a varied number of Namalwars in that sense. And these are stories that I would like to share in our in my in my talk, uh, who 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 actually are taking the work forward in Tamil Nadu. It's interesting. But what is this multiversity idea? The multiversity idea was interesting. He said, "See, it is not one university that is going to. It is not the university. It's not the standardized one institute which is going to give you uh, education and change and reformation in the society." It's a, it's a diverse set of farms and people and institutions and uh, thoughts and uh, all of it coming together. And all these are not static, they're dynamic. They are things which have to keep on moving, keep on evolving, just like environment, just like ecology. So he had a very interesting, you know, uh, 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 commu coming together of these thoughts where he realized that diversity is fundamental to uh, to, to everything that you do, to the whole existence of life on earth, diversity is extremely important. And hence, the whole thought, I mean, uh, for, for some of us, it was very interesting because the whole thought that when you start a university or when you start a standardized single thing or one monolith of an institute, it actually does not help in taking thinking, innovation, uh, work, uh, you know, any knowledge forward in some sense. Knowledge actually generate, gets generated when that itself is a diverse process. So his idea of multiversity was something that we were all thrilled with. And we did travel to some of the farms that he initiated with various farmers. So in every region in Tamil Nadu, you will see, you, when you go to the field, you'll always have see one of a, a few farmers there, you know, doing uh, some uh, agroecological work. And you ask them, uh, how did you start? And then they'll say that Namalwar one day came to a farm. Or I met Namalwaraya in some meeting and then asked him to come over to the farm. And that changed their lives. So that was the interesting thing. Uh, as I said, uh, he, you know, he, he uh, also was very, very good in communicating all of this to the people. It is not just about going from meeting to meeting to meeting. He had so many meetings in the day and in, and during the 10 years that we traveled with him, we have never seen him sit somewhere and, you know, do uh, some work. Because for people like me, you know, you have to sit somewhere and then write for days together. So if I want to write something, I'll take a break and write. For him, he was traveling and traveling and speaking and doing meetings and sleeping on the floors and having, you know, almost he had become a Gandhi. He had dropped, he had even at the end of you know, the last few years, he had even given up his uh, shirt and uh, top clothes and was just having a tort, uh, you know, a, towel, a, a, a green uh, towel, which is indicative of the farming. And then he had a, a bundu and that's all. And uh, even within all these things, you know, interestingly, he kept writing. So we were always wondering, when did he write? And he writes whenever he gets time which is sometimes between meetings, between before he goes to sleep or getting in the morning. Now, whatever time I've seen, he moves out and then sits in the book, picks up a paper, maybe even from the garbage, some paper, which is like we have one-sided paper or something and starts writing. Even there, he was very clear that it was the, his, his whole life was 
what we should learn from ecology environment resource use materials use everything was so natural to him he wrote many books and interestingly we all think that he wrote a lot of uh, books on agriculture he did write a lot of materials on agriculture but uh, i also found that he also wrote a lot of books on environment uh, something like uh, you know uh, you know ini ellam yerkai thai man thai man ne vanakkam then uh, i think bhumi thai all these kind of you know books that he wrote are books which covered uh, ecology and environment as much as it covered uh, agriculture Uh, he also wrote a lot of interesting books on uh, agriculture in, including the history of agriculture uravukkum uravukkum undu or varalar kind of books now uh, so see now let me you know uh, remains some of the uh, his direct connection with uh, some of the ecological work or environmental you know issues that were in tamil nadu i largely talked about uh, his uh, his work, his foundational work kind of but let me also now dwell a little bit into uh, his real you know action kind of work that he was sort of involved in 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 all the work that he did obviously most of his work was on agriculture and that is something i will relate later because it is very interesting to look at what he had to do in agriculture related to ecology and what is the tie up like what is the meaning of the tie up now here uh, i I, i mean before i came to this talk when uh, the talk was on, i mean when uh, father asked me to you know give this talk on ecological justice i talked to a few people uh, who have traveled with him people like uh, selvam arichellur selvam and uh, gobi chetty palayam kumar and uh, uh, even 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 nityanand jeraman uh, in in chennai who is uh, another of those very very strong characters who's fighting environmental issues many of you know him uh, now from many of their thoughts and collective thinking i i churned out a few you know a few few of a uh, few things from or or you know pearls from the history of the malwar's life uh, see sometime i mean i i i think it was kumar who told me that you know uh, that even in as way back in 1979 in dharmapuri district there was a industrial pollution issue a bone factory mill factory had come something that was being made out of bone you know dried bone and all that and it was highly polluting and then he had actually led a struggle there to uh, stop it uh, in the 1990s uh, we see him uh, you know i mean there, there was also one struggle in coimbatore where uh, i mean kumar was telling that he was also involved where uh, they learned about uh, the bhavani river being badly exploited by the itc factory and there was an advocate velusami Uh, who was fighting that issue very strongly and was isolated in some sense and he was being harassed by the industry and all that and then namalwar ayya and kumar and all of them went over there and walked into the industry and you know took photographs and made some noise there and then they were locked up in the industry they were not allowed to move out they were threatened and then the local people had to come and make a big noise outside and relieve them and or get them out and all that this is basically what the bhavani river and while we are talking about the bhavani river that was one big struggle that i think uh, namalwar ayya led uh, after he i mean there was also something that he uh, was associated with in the 90s uh, with the uh, very very you know as famous dr jivanand uh, who also we lost and uh, he uh, ran the tamil nadu green movement as most of you know and uh, kumar was telling us telling me the whole uh, uh, story about how they used to do uh, solai sandipu um, uh, you know meeting people in the forest this is very interesting because that was the time when all these pujivanandam doctor and uh, namalwar and all tied and came together in the on the environment movement and actually thought decided that it is not enough that we stand up as just environmentalists or farmers we have to get all the rest of the people also so they worked they brought in writers poets artists all of them to the forest and did solai sandipu and slowly you saw the movement in tamil nadu becoming a little more deeper with uh, the the writers and the poets and all getting into the environmental movement something very similar happened at that time uh, earlier on in kerala also with, with the silent valley struggle uh now in the 19 in the 2000s sometime uh which i also sort of remember uh having read somewhere uh, is this uh, bhavani river protection rally that namalwar led this was a uh, 
you know what a kalnadai rally uh, that went on for about 25 days all through the bhavani river stretch starting from bhavani to all the way to kodumudi basically with three environmentally you know uh, strong demands uh, or 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 uh, campaigns to protect the river uh, because bhavani river as all of you know is even today one of the most exploited rivers for its pollution for its you know textile industries and Uh, and the paper factories and all that and here they ad- they were addressing the pollution issue they were talking about natural farming and they were also uh, doing things to protect the uh, the, the the river uh, itself now uh, let me you know uh, but at the end of the day what we all remember i mean as as, as a person who worked uh, during his last years last 10 years i must say 2004 to 2013 we were working very closely with him in that save or rice campaign as i as i, as I uh, earlier said in the in mostly in the tanjavur delta area but also in kanyakumari and a few other places and it spread so widely because of the malwaraya and nel jayaraman basically and now it is being spearheaded by uh, professor dorai singham and ragunathan and uh, rajiv and lots of other sri ram and Uh, uh, of kadra mangalam who is well known uh, for his unfortunate you know his farm was destroyed by the uh, oil companies which uh, oil being strewn around in his farm and there was a big fight on that uh, nadwasal project issue and the kadra mangalam issues are all all of it namalwar was involved till he was he passed away in the kaveri delta delta mavatathula when that issue happened no that methane gas project of the great eastern energy corporation of the us multinational company along with the government of india's project this one single project would have destroyed the delta area forever for years to come it would have made life horrendous for the farmers in that region it is not just about you know shale gas being exploited it was about water from the coast also entering into the lands because this was being extracted and you would have had one of the biggest ecological dist- disasters in tamil nadu it wasn't a development project it was a destructive project but namalwar at the end realized and this is a very poignant story that i also have to say because namalwar at that point realized that in fact he literally almost stopped all his agriculture work his organic natural farming work he was no more going into doing natural farming at that time he was going from village to village talking about this methane gas issue uh, at that time interestingly many of there were many 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 small groups working in those delta area uh, fighting the uh, issue but they all needed namalwar to bring them together because you know at the end of the day groups sit together and do not work sometimes they don't work with each other some work with each other but when they see namalwar ayya they all come together and that was a huge struggle it took his life he was not taking rest he was not having proper food he was going from meeting to meeting and uh, he had by that time also you know moved out uh, of his family and his family was very worried and all that but he didn't care i remember that me and musha my colleague both of us uh, had gone in august 2013 uh, to tiruvannamalai uh, to tiruvannamalai tiruvannamalai koku foundation had done a you know a seed campaign there and we were invited and we went there and namalwar ayya was there he was frail and he was weak and all that but he was he had so much of love for both of us and for all of us in kerala also so the moment he saw us he asked both of us to come on stage and then like mahatma gandhi putting his hands over two of his uh, you know that famous photo of mahatma gandhi putting his hands on the shoulders of the two of them uh, that is one of the most beautiful photos of mahatma gandhi uh, you will see uh, there, there is this photo of uh, namal varaya putting the hand on both me and ushan two sides and then introducing us to the crowd they are saying that these are the two malayali people from kerala who had come to change the uh, fate of farmers in tamil nadu with indigenous varieties of seeds and organic farm he was our big supporter and big you know one of the biggest uh, pillars of our work and our movement uh, we at that time i remember i told him i went to his we both me and usha we went and we told him see ayya you shouldn't do this you should not go running around doing this methane fight let the youngsters fight let the others fight we will also join the fight we will come from kerala also to fight but you take rest and he said no i am needed there and it was as if he had decided that that will be his big fight i strongly wish that the government continues to respect the struggles that namarwar das did 
to stop the methane gas project and never bring that project in Tamil Nadu. Now, let me go into the life of Namalwa, into the personal facets of Namalwa as an ecologist, as an environmentalist. What was he? See, many discussions that I had with people. I myself, we have traveled so much that we have observed him you know, in close quarters. We have, he has come and stayed with us for days together. We have stayed with him uh, for, for days together in many of our campaigns. See, even today, you no, know, now we talk about waste and zero waste and materials, and we talk about climate change and we talk about ecology. We know all these things we talk about. Even at that time, he was behaving as if he was a complete ecologist living on minimal resources. He was a minimalist. Even in a dress, he was a minimalist. You see, when even when you have to use a material, he will take only the minimal. That paper, two sides of the paper. If there is a single side, he'll use that. And interestingly, whenever he was still traveling, no, he, lots of people, Kumar, Selvam, all of them tell us something. And I also know personally that he never wanted to travel in a car for himself. If in case we give him, we tell him, uh, no, no, Aya, we will send a car for you. He'll say, Yana kaga vada koda, don't give it for me alone. If there are four or five people, then I'm okay. He never wanted a car for himself. In fact, he was a public transport person. He loved train travel. And you know why he loved train travel? He loved train travel because he always said that in when you are traveling by train, there are always people who are, can sit together and then they can chat. And that was also a, a, a made eye for him to speak about all these issues. Conversations were extremely important for him. He was exactly like Gandhi in that, in that sense. It, it, there's an interesting incident that Kumar you know, narrates. Uh, in, I mean, and when I, I mean, when I quote Selvam and Kumar and all that, they are very good friends of mine. And that's why we have been also traveling with them in some sense. You know, uh, this is a very interesting incident where there was a big businessman, I mean, a big, really rich man who uh, was a big fan of Namalwaraya, who was like follower of Namalwaraya, and who said, Aya, why are you doing all this traveling? I will give you a tempo travel. So he actually went and bought a tempo travel, refurbished it and all that, you know and made it as good for Namalwaraya to travel and said that from now on you travel, whichever meeting you are going, going, you get the petrol cost for them, I will give you a driver also. And Namalwaraya told him, the moment I go alone in a tempo traveler like this and go, I will be cut off from the people. And secondly, what an image am I showing? I am traveling alone in a vehicle like this. It is not about luxury or it is not about my convenience or your convenience. It is about what I am showing to the people. I have, I am, I, it is my life is a message kind of. This is very much Gandhi, you must understand. So it is interesting. I mean, uh, Selvam, in, in fact, you know, even narrates a story. See, where he was telling about one story where in, uh, in Arachalur, for, uh, there was an uh, uh, interesting uh, incident where they were all standing together and there was this bike, one young fellow with a bike. So the bike was locked in somewhere in between, you know, in the parking lot. So he got on the bike, switched it on, and he was moving up and down the bike, you know, to and fro to get it out. We all do that. Common thing, no? we all do that. And then finally, he got it out. And Amalwaraya walked up to him and said, see, Tambi, why are you doing this? You could have got out even, you know, without getting and sitting in the vehicle, you could have pulled it out without switching on the bike. You could have done this very small act without polluting the environment. He was that. That was Namalwaraya. Even you know when you do school programs, that is that I have, we have also seen when you are doing farming, you know farming training and all that. First thing he will do is he'll get up in the morning and go into the field. He will spend some few uh, minutes to hours on the field picking up all the plants that he wants to demonstrate, and then he'll come to the program. He won't even, uh, you know, say, uh, Jeram, and go and pick the field. He, or Sridhar, go and do that. Nothing. He will go and do it directly. Pick it up, bring it to the table. And when the classes start, by that time, he was already ready with all the materials to teach people natural farm. Same thing he did in the schools also. You know, when you go to the schools and garbage training and all that, you know, organic product and everybody waste. Kuppa, makka, kuppa, he will collect, actually. In the morning, he'll collect in the school and then he does the talk. That was Namalwaraya's, you know, one huge side uh, in, as far as his personality is concerned in ecological farming. He was basically somebody who lived and demonstrated that this is the way you should live. 
let me come to you know, the other facet about him. I will I'll take another 15, 20 minutes, 15 minutes maximum. See, ecological farming. Yerkai Vivasaya. To him, I'm not going to explain this because there is somebody else who's going to talk about this in detail. I'm going to give an interpretation of it in the way I or some of us understood it. See, one of the first things is that, see, how does, what is this connect to ecological farming? Obviously, he learned that basic thing from the chemical farming. He used to say that or the, or the non, uh, you know, uh, or the intensive agriculture that we used to, that the green revolution brought in. So he learned from the mistakes and then he went out, corrected it with the people, participated. He learned most of his lessons from the people. And, at the, when, and when he started teaching uh, you know, people as to how he did, the most important thing is he did not do any teaching. He always went to a village, found out that there are some uh, people who are doing wonderful farming. He'll go and visit them and bring them all into the meeting. And then he'll say that, here is this man doing this kind of farming. Let him speak. He will speak. Like that, he, he used to bring all the you know organic farming, natural farming, and nobody in the village even likes them. They are like, uh, they are all, all mad people. Anna Aya will bring all of them into the Medai and will actually say that stories of all these farmers and say that this is how he is doing, you listen to him. This is how this man is doing, pirate, you listen to him, like that. So for him, natural farming, ecological farming was a way of actually community, communicating something very deep in agriculture. Two, three lessons that I or some of us learned. One, see, farmers traditionally were environmentalists, were ecologists. For centuries and centuries, 8,000, 10,000 years of India's farming systems, obviously we have a period when we entered into the forest and did farming or cut down trees and did farming or slashed lands and did farming. But slowly and gradually, the farmers also understood what ecosystems are and started doing farming according to it. And slowly, you know, there was, a, there, was an, there was a equilibrium or a balance that was brought in. Who killed that balance and how was it finished? It was done by the Green Revolution. And when the Green Revolution came, in a few years time, all the farmers in India, or 90, more than the largest number of farmers in India, for the sake of the Green Revolution, became uh, anti-environmental, anti-ecological people. Isn't it true? What did Namalwaraya or what did all these Talwats who then talked about ecological farming did? They handheld the farmers back into becoming ecologists and environmentalists and ecological justice was what he worked on in that sense. He was very interesting. Seed to consumer. He always said seed led the consumer varikyo, vivasai control pannon. But he also said that if something that is produced here travels 1,000 kilometers and go to Chennai, you cannot call it natural farming. You got my idea? Natural farming should be good for nature. So locally, you have done ecological farming, but then your product has to travel all the way there to be sold in a market in a carbon-emitting uh, machine called vehicles or trucks, and then it goes there and gets sold. Are they a pretty natural product? Our friends are telling that. It's very interesting. So for him, farmer as an environmentalist, as ecosystem people, and livelihood being based on it was extremely important. He connected the farmer and the ecology, like, you know, very, that connection, what was just lost, he tried and brought back. I will now dwell a little bit on the communication and campaigns. I mean, this man called Namalwar was an unbelievably, you know, grounded, simple, and and, and such a successful communicator. See, what was his teaching like? Now, interestingly, if you look at the way he, I mean, some of us who know him, you will understand that, see, first of all, his philosophy is very clear. Life form has equal rights. That is ecological philosophy. But for him, ecological justice is not, doesn't stand separate or environmental justice. It is also connected to social justice. So for him, every life form was equal, but downtrodden, marginalized people he realized we're the first affected if anything wrong happens. So access to natural resources was something that he always proposed. About. He used to say that, see, if you are a producer of food, then you will take care of the land. 
but if you are a producer of money producing whatever agriculture for money then there is a chance and a tendency that you may not take care of your land he was very strong you know on that point the other interesting thing that uh, you know i we all remember about or he said you know whenever he talks about agriculture or ecological agriculture or uh, he talked a lot about lakes he talked a lot about wetlands and whenever he talks about all this he you see there are incidents also like people like selvam and i'll say you know he says there was once uh, selvam was telling us a story i mean i'm using that anecdote to tell you something uh, see uh, once uh, you know selvam was recounting the story uh, recalling the story that they had gone to a village and uh, selvam was giving a very big class on uh, why you should not do that farming why you should not do this farming and how vermi composting i mean or or composting should be used and you know giving them basically a good lecture on organic farming and namal varaya came we all they all came back and then namal varaya was telling selva never frighten people he asked him one question how many times will you go to that village he in a selva incidentally said uh, maybe once in three months then uh, namal varaya told him how many times the chemical industry will also go there many times so what is the difference because you are going there once in a while and telling them something somebody else is also going there and telling them something the agricultural officer will go there and tell them something and eventually that people what will happen to the people the people will think that whoever coming from outside is the intelligent people is the people who are going to give them lot of knowledge and we are fools their knowledge is and avanga avangaloda arivu motta enna motta yana arivu ana people who are coming from outside are the brilliant people noru oru oru yosana avangalukku varuvilla they will also get that feeling never do that is what namalwar told him i mean this is very interesting because he also told him don't frighten people if you at all you have to change people and reform them it has to be through love and knowledge so he said don't they should not despise their knowledge and think the external is better or superior they should not be disempowered and eventually be dependent on you namalwaraya always decided that whatever you do you look at what he has done hundreds and thousands of farmers are doing are they going back and asking somebody that how do you do this how do you do that are they looking for another leader no they are all saying that namalwara starters now we know what to do and from there they have developed the knowledge they have developed evolved the knowledge that was the brilliance that you know namalwaraya had and the other thing is you no know, the, the the frightening aspect you know you cannot frighten people to knowledge you can only love them to the knowledge that is something that namal varaya very very clearly said we also understand that because in our meetings also the same thing he will do he will never get into conflict with people instead he will sit with them and debate and discuss and you know eventually most of them get convinced as far as women are concerned no he always thought that you know women are the closest to the environment they are the ones who can understand the earth so he in many meetings he made sure that you know women come he will call them there are some women who are doing some exemplary work he'll make them speak each time a villager is allowed is asked to come and speak about his methodology in the farm uh, in into the into a crowd you know what happens that villager gets empowered to speak and that is what namal varaya always kept doing interestingly you know the other facet of him was one terrific thing is most of the things that he kept teaching all of us whether it be ecological justice issues or environment or agricultural technologies methods organic farming he had stories somehow in his life at some point he realized that you know talking ideology and talking uh, you know all this analysis and talking philosophy people don't understand at after some time it's boring for the people it is stories so somehow for people like me storytelling was imbibed because of it the way he used to tell simple stories for children like he talks to children he'll talk to all of us and we all love stories see and and other thing was that he was so sharp in his thinking you know because see i have I have seen him for instance sit in meetings for 3 days taking notes you know not even talking but at end somebody will somebody will ask them namal varaya you have not been speaking he will use only two sentences and he'll finish the issue he will have made something more clear than any of us can make i'll tell you one example which is our personal example 
you I mean we all remember that there was a big initiative between india and america this is called the india us knowledge initiative in agriculture it is basically america wanted to teach india genetic modification gm crops marabadu matra petta payargale avangalukku inge kondu varanum avladha india government tied up with america some crores of rupees hundreds of crores of rupees india government will put why to understand american knowledge and what is the knowledge knowledge of genetically modified crops why because they want to sell their genetically patented genetically modified crop to india now india was resisting it so they wanted to convert a number of their our scientists into their thinking so that it can come back the technology can come here it was a big initiative so we were all getting together in hyderabad to understand what this initiative was you know center for science and uh, center for sustainable agriculture and others were organizing this namal varaiya was also there three days meeting big big people spoke very important people spoke we understood everything about indo us knowledge initiative we took notes namal varaiya old man he was also sitting and taking notes like all of us like a school boy he was taking notes three days of meeting at the end of the third day namal varaiya is asked by one of the organizers ayya for three days we have been teaching telling all this you have been keeping quiet do you have something to tell us he got up he did not even speak much he got up he said what can a 500 year old culture of america agricultural agricultural culture of america te- teach a 10000 year old agricultural culture in india one sentence and everything was explained to us that was the sharpness of this man amazing sharpness in everything he did that he he had that sharpness uh you know this was interesting because i was talking to you know uh, today i was talking to nityanand jayaraman to understand some of the ecological concerns in tamil nadu and especially to contextualize it in the talk uh and uh, nithi was telling us telling me one interesting sentence he said sridhar i had very nithi had nityanand had Jeremy and I I hope you know him he is one of the very strong environmental activists and journalists in working in Chennai in the uh, and and he uh, very closely worked with that Unilever issue and also the uh, the sterilite issue and all that so Nityanand was telling us see after so many years of our work no we have never seen a rock star like Namalwar i was shocked i said what is rock star how what is he how does he become a rock star no he i mean none of us have been able to inspire young people so much like namalwar did he was such an inspiration for young people i said what is your evidence what is the evidence and he was telling us the evidence is simple even today in the environment movement in the ecological movement and environment movement in in tamil nadu most of the people who are coming to the environment movement have somewhere related to namalwar ayya or heard him or heard him talk seen his video or sent went to a class which he started vanagam or uh, kudumbam or somewhere and that is a relation that they have so now nithi was actually telling me i have not worked or or you know uh, traveled much with namalwar i really don't know him much but there are hundreds of namalwars that i know of this young namalwars now here is another story i have to tell you because you know namalwar ayya was also a storyteller i have to tell you the story this is about selvam and kumar and all of them you know they were traveling together and namal varaiya was being asked in one of the meetings somebody asked him what is your goal you are doing all this big work what is your goal and namal varaiya was sent what was thinking hey you what is my goal is it to convert people to organic is it to bring ecological justice is it to do seed for seed of sustainable development he went on thinking for some time and then came back and then this this lady asked him again ayya what is your goal you are here to answer that question and you know what namalwaraya said he said enna maadri 100 namalwaraya namalwara uruvaakrade en goal enna enna clarity nu paarenga look at the clarity it is not about the selfish i, I mean somebody like me should be like that it's not like that but only a gandhi only a buddha only a jesus can say something like this because they all tried to make hundreds and thousands of people like them but we became we couldn't become like them that is our problem but namalwar i also said the same thing the fact 
the, 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 I mean, there's another interesting story which I should tell you. See, Namal Varaya, I mean, this again was shared to me. See, Namal Varaya, what is his methodology? Now, it's interesting. You know, there is, I mean, I'm not, I'm not blaming, I'm not, you know, criticizing anybody, but everybody has their name. So suppose you go and, you know, talk to that Maharashtra, wonderful agri farmer called Palekar. He'll ask him, sir, what is the method of your farming? He'll say Palekar method. Okay, you go to somebody else, they'll say that method, their names method, all in their name only. Hit me. Or maybe in the, in the name of a, a, a university or a government or something. So somebody asked him, yeah, Nammalwar method in our farming irka. The question. So you know what he said? Unakku arivu vandiri chinnu solladu e Nammalwar method. Which means the fact that you have gained knowledge or you are knowledgeable as a farmer, you have gained the knowledge to sustain, to take your ecological farming forward. That is the Nammalwar method. Imagine this man. Can we believe that such a man walked in this earth? See, his campaigns are terrific. Nityanan told me, you know, and I also understand this very well. See, methane, hydrocarbon, is all the And Tamil Nadu, like methane, is a single pair. Hydrocarbon is a lot of People will beat you up. People will chase you out if, they, if somebody comes and says hydrocarbon or methane. This Namalvaraya, almost single handedly, with all the hundreds of his followers, has changed the very paradigm of some of these terminologies because they were campaign points. Not that methane and hydrocarbon are bad, but because methane and hydrocarbon in the way they were brought into Tamil Nadu and discussed was to kill the farmers. That got them a bad name and Namalwar's campaign was very instrumental in it. See, I have seen a lot of young people. When I had the wonderful fortune, I must say blessed by some big force from the, from, from the universe to have done the, the lecture, the first lecture of the first anniversary of Namalwar after Namalwar's passing away in 19, 2014, when that lecture was done, I was invited by uh, Vanagam to give that lecture. Along with me was uh, Nalla Karnaya. Uh, we all know who Nalla Karnaya is. And both of us were, me, uh, with a younger person, and Nalla Karnaya, the very, very grand old person. And we were giving that talk. We found hundreds and hundreds, some 800,000 young people coming there to look at Ayya, Namalwar Ayya's, you know, last, uh, where he is lying, his, soul, his body was lying, and uh, that they have a small mound and a tree and all that there, and to, to give their, you know, uh, their uh, last uh, uh, rites and all that, they were all come. And uh, I, 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 I immediately sat with all these young people, a number of groups, I sat with them. I said, why do you come? Why did you come? I was thrilled. I was excited because these people, young people were telling that they came because it was Namal Varaya. It was amazing. How could young people, whom we are thinking that they are soulless because technology, you know, film, cinema, technology, music, they are all soulless. Namal Varaya could somehow give them the soul. In this whole non-human technology world, Samal Varaya could connect them to the earth. That was the ecologist and the ecological justice that he is talking about. All the pain, the struggle, the solutions, everything he carried. But he gave such a positive message to these young people. Now let me conclude. I am I'm coming to the last part of my talk. See, now I have told so much about Namalwar. We have you know, discussed so much. Uh, the environment movement, the ecological movement, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Olegale, India, Unlike any other period, we are now... Pardon. Unlike any other period, we are now in the last phase, in the, in the most dangerous phase of the mm. environment. Ecosystems, disasters, <laughs> ecological disasters, climate change. Oh, and all this are hitting us badly. Ipo, we, it is not, I mean, while we can say that, okay, let, should we wait for a Namalwar to come and help us? Or should we become the Namalwars and take it forward? Should we become the Nityan and Jairamans? Should we become the Selvams and the and whoever, all of these people who have struggled, who have shown the way forward? They have led us. They have been here long term. They have been meaningfully showing the struggles. They have been there wherever the people are needed. Are we doing that? I know that a lot of young people are sitting in the meeting. Are we all doing that? See, you are all talking about, we all talk about grassroots mobilization, but that is not enough. 
for example some struggle for some industry is happening somewhere you know people pollution you will we will go and fight it out two three weeks one month two months but after that see that kind of struggles need so much of people so much of you know to travel with them to continuously follow up to be there with that issue for you know for instance for me we have been, i mean i've been in this movement for now let's say 25 years i had a job i left it and i've got into it i am not dying i am happy only intelligently intellectually also i've become only better than taking up some you know uh, boring job and sitting there and spending our old life and not being meaningful to the mother to the earth that we were born in that is very important no so that is important in the current scenario namalwar rayas identity was not an identity to his own image it was an identity to the earth to his motherland to tamil to the culture and his struggles were to sustain it he did not see the difference between the tamil culture and the ecological culture the ecological justice issue he did not see the difference between agriculture organic agriculture or natural or ecological agriculture and ecological justice and the tamil culture he saw it all together he realized that these are all fundamental we cannot wait for another periyar to come we cannot wait for another nammal war to come the questions of environment natural justice natural farming social justice everything has been now given to us by our forefathers of which one of them has been a big man like nammal varaya we all can be like him his dream if it was to create 100 nammal wars let us all just try and struggle to be that see it is like this no god we all think god is the biggest but we all don't want to become god we will keep god in our pockets or in our necks or we will go and you know talk to god in a temple or we will put the money for the god but we will never decide that we can also become like god namalwar gandhi mahatma buddha what did they all say become like us that is what their message was buddha's message was even the hindu thing aham brahmasmi it is not uh, you know uh, god is within me it's not that i am we are can we all transform ourselves into becoming namalwars for the for the sake of the earth corona everything we will be able to handle if you are able to tackle this problem so thank you very much for this opportunity let us all take it forward let us take it deeply inside and then let us Uh, you know humble be very humble like namal varaya and be able to make the change that we this earth and all of us need thank you very much for this opportunity sir hello hello yes yes i can hear you we can hear you ah uh, sir samuel sir ah uh, check that yes now we are going to close now ah uh, uh, one more minute one minute my pa one minute so okay. கேள்வி கேட்கறதுக்கு ஒரு ஆசை இருந்திருக்கும் பட் பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் ஷார்டேஜ் ஆஃப் டைம் வி ஆர் நாட் இன் பொசிஷன் டு என்கரேஜ் கொஸ்டின் ரைட் நவ் ஏன்னா மைப்பா வந்து எனக்கு டைம் கொடுத்துருக்காரு நைன் ஓ கிளாக் ஐ டு பினிஷ் தேஷன் but uh, i must tell you one thing my wife is a post graduate in agriculture she worked with ms swaminathan in his ms swaminathan foundation so uh, today i think we are going to have a lot of debates 
with regard to this discussion on number one. Then, see, she just now brought up this issue that uh, green revolution is not. How could have we fed so many people who are hungry in 1940s and 50s? So only with green revolution we could have it could have been possible to feed those those many crores of people in India. Abinte is a constant question which she raises. Either you mean or bail for me now? I am like a very happy person. And the bail order we can ask. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yes. Sir, this is a terrific question. This has always been the question. I have two very quick answers to it. Uh, you know, in I did a calculation. Uh, I did a personal, you know, I, I can share the data also. I did a calculation. I am not able to quote the data very, very, you know, clearly. I did the calculation of the population of that 1950s before pre-green revolution population, and I calculated till 2010, but not 2010. I think 2015 or something. 2010 around that, let's say. Uh, I took the data of the production of rice and wheat in india which is what green revolution targeted green revolution did not target anything else mostly it was the increase in production of food grains basically largely it also influenced other things but these are the two things and food security means mostly about grain only the other things are just add ons so i took this data the production in 1950 and 1960 1970 1980 1990 like that and the population in these places in these times then we have the who data which says that how much should one person eat to be able to say that food security irukke and adavade and the nutrition kedachirukke 2500 calories nu solranga 3500 kilo calories solva so i took the one of the data and i extrapolated it into basically saying that every person needs about 30 35 i mean 5 kilos 7 uh, 5 to 7 kilos per Uh, month uh, uh, per person, which is about twenty-five to thirty-five kilos per month per family, and uh, this means in a year kind of. And the annual, na multiply pani paathe. Paakum bode interesting data na na whether it be in nineteen fifty or twenty ten, the percentage of food that India produced, ado orda forty percent around. 40 to 45 percent. आधुनिक नमः पापुलेशन का फीड पंडर दिख के दारा आलमा इरुंदर इन्हें आई फाउंड मोर देन इनफ. नाउ देन आई कैलकुलेटेड. सी इंटरेस्टिंग. आई कैलकुलेटेड. बट देर इस अ प्रोडक्शन इंक्रीज आल्सो. आई वेंट एंड लुक्ड एट द प्रोडक्शन इंक्रीज. इट इस नॉट अ प्रोडक्टिविटी इंक्रीज. प्रोडक्टिविटी � Uh, whatever percentage is 400 percent. So what was the increase? Increase was in the land area. Productivity came from 2.1 to 3.2, 3.3. Avada. So this technology actually increased in production. I know I'm not, I'm not even doubting that. But then in terms of the percentage of consumption, in spite of the increased population, we are still only wanting 40 percent. Ada avade. Na adhikku vera example solrai. So 270 million metric tons ke kitta thakka we are producing. Rice and paddy together. Okay, India is actually procuring only about seventy-five to eighty million metric tons from the farmers, less than hundred million metric tons. That poor though, India, our food security is filled under that. India, our food security is what? Seventy-five percent rural population. Because we free food, we get free. All that, and the cards we get, and the ration cards we get, so fifty percent of urban population we get. That means our average is sixty-sixty-five percent people we get, which means. we are actually a surplus producer okay but other but the, but, the, but surplus producer nalo nama idu panna koodadu we have to continue to do the surplus production the other side parunga global production 1 by 3rd of global production podum global la ellavarkum food kodukiradhukku ana wastage e irukku 30 40% okay so the problem is not in the production alone it is also in the distribution issue ipo see even with this this condition the about 40% of india is not getting enough food yeah it is not a production issue it's a distribution issue it's not more productivity it is actually more go downs that are necessary more uh, you know supply chains that are necessary that is one argument okay 
Now the second argument I'll give you, which is a simpler argument. Sir, suppose we did not have green revolution at all. Okay. We would have still developed the natural technologies to do this. Because it was imperative for us to develop. Now look at, I'll give you an example. Look at the pharma industry. The pharma industry went into chemicals much, much. I'm not, I'm not anti-chemical and all that. But it went into a lot of chemical production. Now, Sandoz tablets, paranga. Sandoz tablets, it was a calcium tablets. Calcium Sandoz, Now you buy Sandoz tablets and look at it. It's not the chemical calcium anymore. It is a higher herbal product. So what does it mean? Suppose that chemical intrusion was not there at all, we would have still discovered the non-chemical organic agricultural systems. Now we are discovering it and now it is being expanded and now many areas where production uh, after two to three years of uh, you know good fertility in the soil, we are equaling in the uh, chemical production methods. I am, I, am, I, mean, I am saying with all responsibility because I am also uh, 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 one of the directors in a quite a formidable pharma producer organization in, Tamil, in Kerala, which is into 100% organic indigenous, indigenous paddy. I cannot uh, continue organic and indigenous with a farmer producer organization without the proper cost and business. You get me? So it is producing well, it is selling well, and that is why we are able to survive. So my point is this, that if the technology, were, if that was not there, we would have ourselves developed something for our system. Uh, unfortunately, on the evolution, the indigenous variety sort of evolution in the number knowledge system sort of evolution in the green revolution it did not happen because of that that's all thank you thank you sir uh, thank you thank you thank you sir thank you thank you thank you thank you Good evening to everybody. I am very happy to give a word of thanks for each and every person there, those who are participating in this webinar. First of all, I would like to thank our uh, um, VC Vice Chancellor who has presided over this meeting. Then our HOD who has welcomed all the participants and the speakers for this webinar. I would like to give a special thanks to our professor, Dr. Samuel Ashiraj, who is the inspiration for this webinar, who has uh, talked about and he has spoken about Namalwa, that he must be appreciated, he must be studied, then only we could uh, understand his contribution towards this uh, community and betterment of this world, so that we have arranged this webinar. So a special thanks to our uh, Professor uh, Samuel Ashiraj. And also now I would like to thank uh, Mr. Siridhar. But he has uh, given me a wonderful speech about the Justice Namalwa, justice approach towards the environment and the society. We are all very happy that he has explored so many things and he has uh, given his own experience with Namalwa. So we really thank you, sir, that you have taken effort to join this meeting. We sincerely thank you. And also I thank each and every participants in this meeting. I request you all to spread this news to your friends and families and all the well-wishers. Then they can join this meeting tomorrow and this week. We are the people we have to celebrate Namalwa because he is the environmental sociologist. His thoughts and his views has to be spread out through the, throughout the world. So I thank each and everyone for this uh, webinar, and we are hope we we hope that we will meet again. Thank
थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच आई थैंक एवरीबॉडी फॉर हैविंग आई आल्सो वांट टू थैंक